What's going on, Phoenix? How we doing? Jason almost throw a chair? I, what are I, you doing? I threatened a chair throw. I just want you all on your toes tonight. I might throw a chair. Did you go up the middle and then around? Yeah, I went that way. It was a dead end. <laughs> so then I went all the way around that way. If you're going to run around, go that way. Wow, you know, look at all these beautiful people. You know, right Phoenix? there? Yeah. I see a lot of jerseys. I'm sure we're going to hear about a lot of their favorite players tonight. Yeah, somehow we got Patriots in the front. <laughs> oh, he's, he's trying to make excuses. Yeah. Like, I didn't know it was a Patriots jersey. He's like, I'm sitting next to a Cardinals fan. It's okay. <laughs> I'm really just a Brady yeah. fan. Oh, it's the Waffle King. Oh. And I'm the king of waffles. <laughs> we got a great show for them tonight. A sensational show. Al, when you're ready. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in, one and all. A ferocious crowd in Phoenix, Arizona for today's Fantasy Footballers podcast. Very. Okay. Okay, Red Bull exists. <laughs> well, they're feeling bold, Jason. Very bold, just as spicy, just as we are today. The, the, that's, that's the sweat. We, no, we can smell you. <laughs> Bold predictions episode today. Very excited to hear what you two gentlemen think is going to happen for the are 2022. You, are you sure? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm actually pretty afraid. Some scary things have been said on this exact stage before that, well, some of them came true. That's yeah. true. And others have won the Super Bowl when we call for their demise. <laughs> I mean, but, but who's counting, right? right? We've could, got anything could happen. Yeah, yeah. The possibilities are endless. No one would ever repeat that. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, live. <laughs> Spoiler alert. I'm uh, just, I'm just, dude. You were real funny. Thank you. <laughs> live mailbag here today. Got some news to talk about. The NFL season is oh so close to kicking off. Yes. I believe the last live show we had in Phoenix, Andrew Luck retired moments before it began. He did. He did. So is Josh Allen still... As far as I know, he's, we're still you, good to go. You'd have like 15 people leaving crying if Josh Allen retired right now. Probably more than that. 15? Um, <laughs> I guess we have probably a lot more Josh Allen yeah. in the house. Uh, a reminder, by the way, how many people here are in the Megalobal? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Very excited about this year's Megalobowl. Jason I'm has added it. some wrinkles. You're in it? Yeah. Okay. Are you? All right. But I'm a shark. <laughs> <laughs> Here's where we're going to start tonight, though. We're not going to start with the bold predictions. We're going to start with a quick question. We like to do this for the live shows. Very sophisticated, as always. That's what our brand is about. Mm, yes. Buttoned up. Mm. Simple. Compare a player to a famous celebrity. All Mike, right. Mike, kick it off. I'm going to kick it off here with, uh, I'm going to talk about quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. Good good work, cheeseheads. There's a few of you out there. He has your glasses, Jason. So I'm, oh, baby. We're going to double up here. I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers because my man, Mr. Rodgers, is very much like Tom Cruise. Uh, Hollywood A-list celebrity actor. I, I can hear the crowd like, what? How? Who the hell's Aaron Rodgers like Tom Cruise? I don't even get that it. That is the crowd voice. Thank you Here's for Here's the deal. <laughs> Look, both started out. When their careers got going, 
they were the it guys, just hot tamales. Everyone wants a piece of Mr. Rogers. Everyone wants Mr. Cruz flipping bottles and whatever. <laughs> Risky the, business? No, I don't even remember the movie. Was. Cocktails. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Makes sense with the bottles. I'm setting them up to participate, guys. But Tom Cruise was everything. Everyone, you got to get Tom Cruise in the movie. You got to get Aaron Rodgers in, in all Very the primetime spots. Well, then they kind of got in the media. They said some things that some people may or may not agree with, and the public kind of turned on them. Uh, but here's the thing they're a little bit older, those things have happened, and they're both still crushing. I mean, we got Aaron Rodgers. It just, doesn't he, matter. He can't stop racking up MVPs. Tom Cruise. Can't stop putting out movies that are. Uh, what is Top Gun about to break the record? Like we're we're it's a good movie. We're approaching Did you watch Top Gun. We're approaching Avatar. We're approaching Endgame. All those things, and he just he can't be stopped. It's possibly the best stuff of both of their careers. It's just a little bit crazy. I mean, well, I'm not. Who's to say? Who's to say? Who's to say? Leave it a mystery. About you mean like oils and places where they probably shouldn't go. Things like that. But so that's my comparison. I'm going with Aaron Rodgers is Tom Cruise. Jason, right. what do you got for us? Yeah, I got I got one uh, about Leonard Fournette. I was thinking about Leonard Fournette, and I, and I was like, I think Leonard Fournette is like Steve Buscemi. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Who, who hasn't? Yeah, it's yeah. such an obvious comparison. It is an obvious <laughs> comparison because they're not eye candy, okay? It is not fun to watch Leonard Fournette play football. He is plodding. He looks slow. He is inefficient. But in the end, both of these guys are dang good. Yeah. Buscemi's Look, great. Buscemi's a star. Superstar. He does not make bad films, bad shows, or have bad roles. And Leonard Fournette last year only had one game outside of being an RB2 once he took that role over for the rest of his season. In fact, during that stretch... When he was the full-time starter, he was the running back three in fantasy football. So you could say whatever you want. I think he's one of the best values in the draft. You can get him at the 2-3 turn, and he he is really good for fantasy football. Just don't watch the game. Just, you know, avert your eyes. Just look at the points. Just look yeah. at the points the and app. be happy. I mean, 2-3 turn, that's about where Buscemi goes, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> at the 2-3. Yeah, I like, like to double tap that when I'm on the turn. They're like, can we get this guy? No. How about this guy? No. What about Buscemi? And they're yeah, like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're Buscemi's back. always We're available. Back. <laughs> His ADP right around there. <laughs> All right, I got one more for you, and we said a celebrity, right? Yeah, we did. So, I mean, I'm going a different direction than the actor-actress way that you went. Very mm -hmm. vanilla, by the way. Uh, I'm going to go with Julio Jones. You can put him up on the screen. This one's so obvious. Look, to, to I mean, me. yeah, just, just think about it right now. Like, mm -hmm. Who is Julio Jones like? And you, you've got it. You've got it locked in. Yeah, yeah it's yep, obvious. You got, I, Number I 12 has got it locked some, in in Some the people front. are yelling yeah. it out. It's the Queen of England. <laughs> right? Did you get it? You had it? Yeah, oh, he unbelievable. Had the guy in the Brady jersey. <laughs> Look, it's a simple list of bullet points here, and you could see on the screen. Very similar. Uh, way past their prime. Oh. Mm. Why would you do that to the queen? It, <laughs> exists as more of a reminder of a time gone by. <laughs> yeah. Probably doesn't do a lot on a weekly basis. Yeah. They think they're important, but they're not that important. Oh, 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 man. Wait. You're I, with me, right? You know that we have, we have listeners in England. Well, not sure. my queen. <laughs> this, you're talking up Julio Jones right now. You're like, okay, he's going to be awesome. He's going to be like the queen. <laughs> and lastly, we all say, we've all been saying what if. Because of yeah. what Antonio Brown did last year. But Julio's more likely to give you that A.J. Green season in Man. Arizona. I'm sorry to say. Oh, Arizona. Some people took some late round shots on Julio <laughs> in this room. Guilty as charged. All right, Al, let's move on to the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right, we do have some news to cover before we move on to bold predictions. 
Sean McVay says Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson both, quote, good to go. Oh. We had our League of Record draft yesterday. And I've been in many drafts over the last week. And it seems like people are afraid to take Cam Akers. He keeps falling farther and farther. The gap right now in average draft position, fourth round, 11th round. Ooh, Akers down to the fourth? Even is it, still, I mean, not, that's a huge gap between the two. Yeah, I do not believe that is far enough. In fact, in preparing for this show, one of my bold predictions, the, the third one that did not make the cut, was going to be that in games that Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson both play, Daryl Henderson will outscore Cam Akers in fantasy football. That is the type of split... That's the type of split that I think could legitimately happen. And if Cam Akers doesn't get back from the Achilles injury, Sean McVay, you know, we have this theory of rational coaching that doesn't always come true. But Sean McVay is as good a coach as exists. If Cam Akers looks like he looked in the playoffs last year, he's not going to just sit there giving him the ball over and over and over like he did in the playoffs last year when he didn't have Daryl Henderson. If Daryl Henderson looks better, he's going to outscore Cam. Mike, have you wanted to take Daryl Henderson late in drafts? Daryl Henderson? Yeah. Every time. Every time. Because you yeah. believe that it'll be more of a split than that ADP. I'm just, Cam Akers freaks me out. All right, let's move on here. Bucks coach Todd Bowles. Russell Gage Ooh. on track to play week one. Is the shine completely gone from Russell Gage this offseason? He is for me. Um, they In this offseason, about the they Queen of England? Yeah, the Queen of Jay, England. Yep. Jason, can we talk to the Queen of England? Yes. <laughs> Here I am. Your Majesty, what do you what do you think about uh, Russell Gage as a potential late round value? I was listening to the fantasy footballers. Okay. And they told me a tip last year. They said that if a player has missed most of training camp with an injury, do not draft them because they do not work. Did you want this to happen, Mike? I mean, did you want this? I, he really I stayed did. in it. I did, and then I didn't understand a single word that he just said. I just heard, oh, oh, I'm, very, I'm very old. I'm very old. <laughs> oh, God, I hope this comes back at some point. The queen? Did yes. we have a visit? Did we pay for closed captioning? Do we have someone to... Because I would really like people to know what I said. It was excellent. I mean, what the Queen said. Something about Russell Gage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had a tip on the uh, you know uh, top ten things to remember uh, at the end of the year, and one of it was looking back to last year, players who missed the entirety or the majority of training camp with an injury. They were not a good value when you bought that injury dip. That is Russell Gage. So he's on track to play week one. That is never a guarantee he's ready to go. But when you miss that much time and you sign the Queen of England, it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to be valuable. The path, the path, it's more difficult now to have relevance. Godwin will be there and involved at some point very soon. One more bit of news, and I'm going to hit the hype train for yes. this. Remember when this was a different drop? Oh, and we Does anybody would... out here remember when this was a different drop? Yeah, we we used to Bring have a, back the terror. We oh, used to have a right. very scary train that we didn't realize. I mean, we're in a studio. We know a train's not plowing through the studio, Mostly. but most people listen in the car, and it was really frightening. We'd get emails, and um, our team of lawyers said maybe don't do that. What I don't get about that is how many people are driving over train tracks while listening to our. You can't be on the freeway. It's not like a police siren where it's like, oh, I think I'm getting pulled over. It's like, if I'm on the freeway and I hear a train noise, I'm not like, oh, no, runaway train. <laughs> okay, that's a pretty it's good on point. The tent. What's it doing? I'll get back to the story here, okay. though. ESPN reporting Titans have a major role planned for rookie Traylon Burks. The news in the offseason was very negative. Wasn't on the field. Conditioning, asthma, lower on the depth chart. But this is the player they traded A.J. Brown straight up for. I have, you know, we've learned from years and years of listening to offseason discussion, especially on rookie wide receivers, mm -hmm. Uh, that there's often more than meets the eye, and things can change very quickly. Justin Jefferson did not start his rookie season as a starter. Last offseason, oh, Jamar Chase. That got me in trouble at this show last year. Oh, Jamar, yeah. Jamar Chase last year in training camp and preseason couldn't catch a ball. He was complaining about the NFL ball versus the college ball. All the drops, and then he was, he was, he was okay. He was all right. <laughs> Jamar, it out? Jamar Chase figured it out. So Turns out all of his college 
uh, production was was more important than what you saw in a few reports from camp and preseason. And you've made this point a few times. Traylon Burks did not just develop asthma in training camp. Like this, if he has it, it's something he's dealt with. Conditioning might have been an issue, but look at the other players on this roster. This is a player that I've changed my opinion on. I've drafted him in a couple of drafts recently. Last night. Last night in our League of Record draft as well. So do you buy in with any of that hype, either the small little train or the freeway train? I, I mean, I'm I'm in. Traylon Burks was – I loved him coming out of the draft just because of the potential. You could tell he's I mean, he's more of a – it's going to take some time. He's a, he's a raw prospect com- compared to, like, London and Garrett Wilson, but that's – they got drafted ahead of him because of that. But with the tools that he has – he could become special. We we got to get him uh, for Team Asthma. Get him the blue inhaler. Get the red is that one. Is the one that took, oh that red go- that red garbage they're peddling on us? They it say it's work. the same thing, but it's it, but not. it's not. No. It's not. Nerds. <laughs> okay, so one guy Jay- in Illinois is like, yeah. <laughs> but but what's the ceiling for Traylon Burks if things go right? Robert Woods coming back off the injury. The depth chart, Top it's 24. Austin Hooper hanging out there catching passes. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at certain rookie wide receivers and you say, well, who has the, the – you could you could say the top five guys all have talent, but who has the opportunity? He is inheriting or could, if we're talking about uh, best-case scenario, he could inherit the A.J. Brown role. That's the type of player he was. That's who they traded to acquire him. So when the, when the news first broke after the NFL draft of who was where – Traylon Burks was the, my heaviest betting favorite to be the fantasy football leader. Now, the offseason has not been uh, good, so, but this news really says that you can't just take preseason. I, I know the Damian Pierce and Isaiah Pacheco, like they're going to be first ballot Hall of Famers, but uh, I do think that where you're drafted in the NFL is for a reason, and he was – the capital invested in him is as much as – I mean, it's, it really is as much as Garrett Wilson, even though Garrett Wilson went higher, because you're trading A.J. Brown for mm-hmm. this dude. Yeah, mm-hmm. first-round rookie wideouts average a 17% target share coming into the league. Higher ceiling, real quick, Burks or Jahan Dotson this year? Burks. Ooh, I will, higher ceiling? If, higher ceiling. I mean, if, every, go right. if everything goes right, it would be Traylon. Okay, Burks, Garrett Wilson? Burks. Burks. Okay. This what about year. Jalen Tolbert? Burks. Burks. Okay. I think the the players that you can have Burks. a good Burks. check them out. Burks. Um, Burks. <laughs> it's fun to say. Say it with us. Burks. Burks. Um, yeah, I mean, it, what are you people doing? Yeah. Do you realize you just <laughs> listened to me? Uh, Chris Olave, Drake London, those guys have the talent and the opportunity right. to really compete there. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Hit it, Al. Welcome to The Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. You guys can nod like they're cheering for us, but they're cheering for me. (laughs) Here's what we're talking about today, because the waiver segment, this is the waiver segment. We're not there yet. Right. Right. We just finished our League of Record draft. There's a lot of players that you pick up, you throw right on the IR. There's a lot of undrafted players that maybe people should pay close attention to, sneak onto their roster after the draft. Give me one name. I'll I'll jump in because mine is really quick. It's it's Jamison Williams. Another rookie. Rookie rookie wide receiver for the Detroit Lions. See, like, because he's coming off of the ACL tear, he's, like, all those names you listed, we're we're not talking about Jamison Williams who – had he not torn his ACL there right, right at the end of the year, where does he go in the draft? I mean, pr- probably is the first wide receiver taken. And the Lions were the team that could get him and wait for him to come back. All reports are positive about him, you know, being on... Ahead of schedule. Yeah, or- on, on that schedule. So, I mean, if you don't like the flyer that you have at the back, or you do, maybe even do, drop him, put, pick up Jamison Williams... Put him on the IR because there will be a point at this season, there will be, where he's either going to be sought after on the waiver wire by everyone or he's just going to be a nice little additional trade chip where you're like, oh, hey, this trade's not going to go through. What if I'll give you 
Jamison Williams, who's going to be back in a few weeks. I can't uh, help but think of the injury return for Odell Beckham in his rookie season. R- exactly. Where nobody would have seen the pathway, but when talent gets on the field, it has a way of just figuring it out. Elijah Moore last year, right. the quarterback struggles. Yeah, I, I would agree completely with this, but only in a league that has an IR spot. Sure. If you can't move him to your IR spot, grabbing a rookie that you know for a fact can't play the first month, I don't think he's worth that investment. Um, I'm going to throw out a guy we've talked about a few times this last week, but you've never heard his name before that. It's Jordan Mason, the undrafted free agent rookie running back for the San Francisco 49ers. Who? It, yeah, exactly. Jordan Mason. <laughs> Look, this is a guy who right now projects to be the fourth on the depth chart. You've got Elijah Mitchell, who, if he's healthy and ready right for week where one. where Shanahan likes him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Undrafted and deep on the depth chart. You've got Elijah Mitchell. You've got Jeff Wilson. And then they drafted Tyrion Davis-Price higher than the undrafted Jordan Mason. But last year, last year, you were drafting in the 603 Raheem Mostert. Now, he got injured, which Elijah Mitchell has never done. So maybe, um, maybe you know, Elijah Mitchell doesn't get injured week one. Elijah Mitchell is the clear starter. But in the 608, same round as Raheem Mostert, we were drafting Trey Sermon. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. He's no longer on the team because <laughs> Jordan Mason. Specifically, uh, they talked about that. They wanted to hopefully get Jordan Mason on the practice squad. But they were afraid people were going to pick him up because he was the highest graded runner from PFF this entire preseason. And they said, we just can't lose this guy. So they cut Trey Sermon. And then you know what happened Uh, last year. Elijah Mitchell was the number one waiver claim because, you know, Mostert got hurt and Elijah Mitchell was awesome. If Elijah Mitchell gets hurt, I think the five foot eleven. Uh, 223 pound Jordan Mason is going to be the number one waiver pickup in week one. Boy, I wonder if Shanahan just checks start percentages in fantasy (laughs) to decide what his running back. Such an angry man. It's every year we fall for it because we know how good the running game will be. Wait a minute. Uh Uh-oh. Dude, yeah, this is a known, uh, I, I think this is common knowledge. Kyle Juszczyk, big fan of the fantasy footballers. Uh-huh. Juice. Listen, Juice. Juice is an avid fantasy football fan. What if he's oh. talking to Kyle Shane and being like, look, I can get this guy off the of waivers <laughs> right now. Put him in the lineup. Make him the starter. And Juice is just they dominating the his legs. Yeah. Ooh. All now, right. Now that would never know. happen. That would never happen. Or would it? <laughs> All right, my, I'll give you one name. Nico Collins, wide receiver for the Houston Texans. Okay. We talk about rookie talent from last year. This is a sophomore season for Nico Collins. 6'4", 215, was a third-round draft pick, and there's a ton of opportunity there. It's not all going to be Brandon Cooks. Very impressive in the preseason. Oh, and Damian Pierce, of course. Uh, well, yes. I mean, now, I'm gonna, now we're offense. filling up our team with Texans, and this is getting frightening. But 60 targets last year for Nico Collins, big-bodied, competitive catch guy, and praised by both coaches and Davis Mills this offseason. I just think you should keep your eyes out for Nico Collins because there's going to be an opportunity there across the field for Brandon Cooks. And, you know, as much as they want to run the football, they can't. This is a situation where they can't run the football because they're, they're losing by two or three touchdowns. So last year they wanted to. They'd start the game. They'd give it to Mark Ingram. He'd gain one yard. They'd do it over and over again. Then they'd be down by three touchdowns, and they have to throw the football. So I think that Nico Collins is just somebody you should pay attention to. Absolutely. And, and deeper benches, all of these guys, you can throw them on there. So that was Welcome to the Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. Unfold your world. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. It's time. Ridiculously Bold Predictions. Is that a Brees Hall HOF already? Uh, I mean... Spreading it across the galaxy? That's right. The Brees Hall truth. Would you go to space? Would either of you guys go to space if you had the chance? Yeah. uh... (laughs) Yes, I would love to go to space. Mike, would you get in on one of those Blue Origin... Can I bring Dramamine? (laughs) Oh, you're worried about... It's, I'm, the tummy tums. I'm, I'm, I'm a vomit everywhere. Uh, why don't you see what vomit does in space, Mike? <laughs> oh. Back in? <laughs> <laughs> it's not my problem anymore. <laughs> All right. Are we ready for the bold predictions? Let's get spicy. 
Why am I doing this? <laughs> it didn't work for me. Oh, is this where we're starting? Wait, yeah, we're starting here. Good luck. Tom Brady. <laughs> yes. Hold on, hold on. Wait, Which wait, way wait. is he going to go? Tom Brady, a my guy for me last year. Finally doesn't have it anymore? Oh! No. oh, oh yes! We're back! We're yes! back! It's the beginning of the end. <laughs> Listen, betting against Tom Brady has been a very... I mean, it's a losing... A losing proposition. Jason did it from this very stage in 2019. When did the, yeah, whenever they won the Super Bowl. <laughs> yes. And whenever you consider saying something negative about Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. Wait, is that his full that's name? That's his full name. He's a junior? How have I not junior. heard of his dad? Yeah, that's the part. I heard multiple middle names. Thomas what? Edward Patrick Brady Jr. What's going on over there? Look, when you say something negative, the response you get yeah, farm animal. <laughs> Was that a llama? Let me just listen again. Okay. A sheep. Got it. He's the Alpaca. goat. He's the goat, oh, so you can't right. be okay. right. If he's the goat, you can never be right. He's going to play forever, MVP forever, Super Bowls forever. I'm just here to say on a spicy Bolt Takes episode mm -hmm. that against all odds and probabilities... He's not going to have it like he's always had it. We don't have precedent for 45. Somebody really. Yeah, they did. A Jets fan out there. Um, <laughs> we'll get him this time. Look, it's not. You're not playing the odds when you bet against Tom Brady. I get it. Jason tried. He lost. We've all lost. But this is not about the camp distractions. This is not about all the unretirement stuff although it factors into the psyche of tom brady this is about inevitability mm. we have seen one quarterback in the history of pro football that threw a pass past the age of 45 and it was george blanda and he threw two touchdowns between the ages of 45 and 48 he, he decided to keep going to 48 he was well, allowed he was permitted <laughs> wow this, this seems unsafe uh, once you go to a certain age, you get like you just get to start until you walk, get carried off the field. You have to like waver your um, health care away. So you don't have comps to what Tom Brady has been able to do, but there are some good reasons why 2021 last year might be as good as it's going to get for Tom Brady and for fantasy. I'm sorry you drafted him. I I know, but first of all, this was the second easiest schedule in all of football last year. We all wondered why Tom Brady went from Super Bowl champion to the I mean, maybe you don't wonder. Maybe yeah. they want to see Tom have a, a good year. But second easiest schedule last year, all-time highest pass attempts. Threw the ball 719 times. Nobody's ever done that before. It's probably not going to happen again. And you actually, believe it or not, saw signs of mortality from Tom Brady on the road. When he played on the road last year, it was 19 fantasy points a game. He was on the very edge of QB1 territory. Wouldn't have paid off on the draft cost and what you wanted. So you did see some signs of that. And my biggest concern for Brady, beyond changing a head coach, beyond retiring and unretiring and not having Rob Gronkowski and having a really Busted. strange press conference where he was just too... It was weird. Too gaunt or it something. Was, it was weird. Yeah, I was hoping we could play the audio because if you haven't listened to it, it's not good enough to just read it. He sounded... Oh, he just sounded sad. sad but anyway, yeah, but beside all that, the fact is he doesn't have the offensive line or anything resembling it that he had back in his Super Bowl season. They lost Pro Bowler Ryan Jensen, his center, the guy he knows. Left their, lost their left guard. Lost their backup center. He should be back. Still a backup center. Um, oblique injury to Tristan Wirfs. When Tom Brady got pressure up the middle... Tom, Br that's his weakness. He Alex, doesn't have any yes, of them. Alex Kappa left in free agency. Yeah, so you have a, a really different situation, and it seemed like you wanted out of Tampa Bay. He wanted to facilitate playing football someplace else. It allegedly. allegedly, allegedly, Thank Dolphins, you. Uh, Dolphins, allegedly, Dolphins is where he wanted to be. <laughs> so the hard part, Some, somewhere in Miami, with Brady is if he doesn't throw forty touchdowns. He's not running. He's not a Trey Lance or a Jalen Hurts or any of these guys that give you points with his legs. So I think, unlike Jason, who just poorly mistimed his prediction, um, 
We're going to see it start to fall apart. And, you know, no one believed it about Peyton Manning. It eventually happened. Now they oh, won. it happened. And he won a Super Bowl, yeah, which Brady sort of. will probably still do. But it wasn't because Peyton Manning was elite. So now, it's bold. It's scary. I'll probably regret it, but I'm going to go with to it. To be fair, mine was, it was the beginning of the end. So, I so mean, that you, was, were you oh, right? The yeah, I was still right. Really... As long as it happens someday, that was the beginning <laughs> moment. Sounds like how Jason would do that. Yeah. yeah. All right, All right Mike, Mike, you're up. Chris Olave will be the Saints' number one fantasy wide receiver at the end of the year. All right, we're on board with that one. That's good. Remember what happened with Chris Olave, rookie wide receiver. The Saints went not just in, all in on Chris Olave. They drafted him 11th overall, but here's what it took. The Saints traded a second, two-thirds, a fourth-round pick. They moved up to 18. To six, like they moved up so many times that it was, well, I guess the Saints. What are they doing? They really want to go get Malik Willis. They really want to go get Kenny Pickett because nobody in their right mind trades this capital for anything but a quarterback. So that's why it was so shocking that all this, when the name came out, Chris Olave, wide receiver, Ohio, and you're like, Okay, okay then. What? Well, well, what about? I thought Michael Thomas was there. Michael look, Thomas. <laughs> yes, Michael Thomas. Thank you. Michael look, Thomas. In training camp, Olave has been absolutely dominating. The training camp leader in targets, receptions, and yes, I get it. Michael Thomas missed some time with a little yoo-hoo, but that's part of the problem, with Michael Thomas, right? Like with when, a little yoo-hoo. Okay. <laughs> <He> okay. Just. <laughs> just <laughs> Just skipping the hamstring. Yeah. You might want to keep the hamstring in it. Uh, I, I don't think I need to do that anymore. All right. We've branded that. Yeah. But the, the, the point is, Michael Thomas, we haven't seen him in years catch a touchdown. Jarvis Landry, good wide receiver, but we're just I, – I do, I do not think we are there with Jarvis Landry being a dominant fantasy force. Since 2014, we've talked about this stat a lot, but rookie wide receivers in the top 15, they average over 19% of the targets and just look at the, the disparity between Michael Thomas and Chris Olave. And when, the, when you're staring that staring down that decision, do you really want to bet on a player who hasn't caught a touchdown in multiple years? And at, and, it, and on top of that, like the, the, the knock on Michael Thomas, well, he's, he runs, he runs the slant route. He runs like real close Another to the, slant route. Yeah, you're like, hold on, hold on. Yeah, backward slant route. Yeah, let's, let's run this out. No, 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 no. Let's run another slant route. So Chris Olave, by the end of the year, he is the one who has the talent. He has the upside. Jameis looks fantastic throughout the preseason. The Saints as a whole look fantastic. And I just I think that drafting Michael Thomas and buy it to when you get Thomas on your team, you don't want Thomas and Olave. So I am saying just, just skip it. Just skip, just skip it, man. It. Just skip. Yeah, like you know the old uh, oh, the old eighties, the old eighties toy. Skip it. It just and like because if you draft Michael Thomas, that thing's going right into your shin, and your you're going to have, have an issue. And you're gonna it's you're gonna hey, pay Dave, for it. Those are painful. Yeah, terrible. <laughs> but you know what's not terrible? Chris Olave, who it would not shock me if he ends up as the number one fantasy rookie wide receiver of this class. And I All think right. that you should be drafting him everywhere you possibly put him can. in order: Olave, Thomas, and Landry. Is that the order? Yeah. That you would draft? Okay. Yeah, but it's Olave. Put them in, or, in order, A, B, C. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for lining that up for me. Yeah. Uh, all right. I want to talk about your team. America's team. Okay. The Dallas the Pander Cowboys. Bear is back. We got any Dallas Ca Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Hey, well, hey. Oh, I am shocked. I, hold I, on. Hold I'm on. Let's, let's restart well. that. Do we have any Dallas Cowboy fans in the house? Okay, but I'm, well, listen, listen, you guys, what? close your ears because every single Dallas Cowboys player will finish behind their ADP this year. Oh. Now that, that may sound, that may sound like some outlandish take. That but sounds like an outlandish take. Would you believe that this actually already happened Last this year? year? <laughs> Last year. Last year, Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, CeeDee Lamb, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, and Blake Jarwin all finished behind where they You're were You're using drafted. Jarwin? That, he was the tight end drafted. But people weren't drafting Dalton Schultz. Yeah, they, but it's rude. Well, sure. 
Where was Gallup drafted last year? Uh, Gallup was drafted as the wide receiver. There it is. It's the only way I could jackknife it in, Mike. <laughs> oh, I know I you wanted that. it. I didn't that even know. That was all I had. So this year, look, you've got Dak Prescott. He's being drafted as the quarterback 10. I have him as the quarterback 13. I think he's going to be fine. I'm not saying he's going to suck, but he's not elite. He's lost at the beginning of the year, Michael Gallup. He's lost to Mari Cooper, and there's a hodgepodge of not highly drafted rookies around C.D. Lamb. Now let's talk about C.D. Lamb. He's being drafted as the wide receiver six. He's a my guy for me last year. I think he's extremely talented. I've got him right now as the wide receiver eight in my rankings, and I think that that is darn near his ceiling. Like, I, I think right now Oof. when you are drafting him, this is, you know, we've never seen Dak target anyone over 132 targets in a season, including the half-year stretch if you extrapolate it out to 17 games with Amari Cooper. Ezekiel Elliott is currently the running back 15, and I know we've brought up the fact that, well, look, last year he was the running back six, but that's not true. I mean, he was the running back six at the end of the year, but that's mm. only because he didn't what? get... What? It's only because he didn't get injured. On a per-game basis, he... It's only because he finished as the running back six. No, it's because <laughs> Otherwise, he... it wouldn't be true. He finished as the... <laughs> I he am was... trying to figure this one out. <laughs> You okay. just said because he didn't get hurt. So if he had been hurt, he no. would have not been that. Listen. Got it. We talk about him being the running back six as if he was the sixth best running okay. back in fantasy okay. football. That is hogwash. He happened to play 17 games. On a per-game basis, he was the running back 16 already behind where he's being drafted as the running back 15. So if you want someone who might be able to stay – uh, you know, uh, healthy for 17 games. Zeke has been a model of health. Great, but he's not going to get more efficient this year being older with a worse offensive line. Michael Gallup is being drafted as the wide receiver 54. He's not going to finish there because he's going to miss some games in the beginning of the season. And Dalton Schultz, I mean, he has very limited upside and he's being drafted in a place where you're talking about really, really good wide receivers on the board that you're sacrificing to take a middle-of-the-road tight end. And then something happened to this team that I already was kind of down on. The left tackle, Tyron Smith, got injured. He's done. He's done basically for the season. He might come back at the end of the year. I doubt it, but maybe it's irrelevant for fantasy football purposes. According to Warren Sharp, we have three years of data with over 400 snaps with and without Tyron Smith. On running back runs not good. in the first three quarters, Dallas goes from the literal number one in the NFL with Smith on the field to the 31st best team mm. in the NFL. How about uh, their passing efficiency? Passing efficiency. They will on, still have a Smith on the field, but not the one you but want. But not the good one, right. Uh, their passing efficiency on first down, it goes from number nine to number 30. This is a massive blow to the Dallas Cowboys offense. And so I, I personally think that the Dallas Cowboys, for fantasy purposes, are a bad investment. They're all going to finish behind ADP this season. Which, based on the earlier reaction, you're all happy about it? It sounded like it. Yeah! See, they're stuck because they drafted Cowboys, but then they don't like the Cowboys, but then the Cowboys have to do good, but yeah. they want them to do bad? Well, that's the magic of fantasy. I got fantasy. a question for Jason. Okay. How much of this analysis is because I drafted Zeke last night? 100%. <laughs> okay. That's it. You're just trying to make me feel I, I bad? I did this all this morning. <laughs> I woke up and I said, let me look at Mike's roster. You should feel happy after the Brady prediction. You're well, probably I, in great I shape. I feel really happy about the part where he finished at the running back six, but he didn't actually, right. except that he did. Enjo but he did it because he did. Enjoy right. having the 16th best running back Ooh. who finishes as running back six. You won't win fantasy games that way. With the running back 16? Not when you draft them ahead of that. Oh. <laughs> At 15? Shh. Andy. Is, is should, what a should there be some sort of water bet here? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay. 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 All right. I have a button. Zeke, Zeke does not finish as a top 15 running back in points per game. Oh. oh. That's his, but his ADP is 15. And I'm saying that that's a bet. Did you 20. draft him yesterday? 20. 18. Wait. If 19. He... 18 oh. and a half. <laughs> 18, I win. 19, you win. Did you... Or it's just the reverse. <laughs> All right. All right. Water bet. Nonsense. 
All right. Except wait. when he finishes at 19, he didn't actually finish at 19 because no. oh. he, he got hurt. Now, real quick, am I, cor- am I remembering it correctly that you drafted him over Steve Buscemi? I did. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Mistake. <laughs> All right, we each have one more bold prediction for you. You ready? I'm really excited about this one because if I say it, it'll come true, right? Definitely. Kyle Pitts ends up the number one overall tight end in fantasy football. Despite all the madness at quarterback in Atlanta, because he's not normal. No. He is abnormal, and he is wonderful, and uh, we need to reevaluate who Kyle Pitts really is. Let me remind you a few uh, little factoids about Kyle Pitts. (laughs) Okay. 6'6", 246, ran a 4'4", 99th. Yeah, handsome. As handsome as they come. That factors into our analysis, we won't lie. He's got a longer wingspan than any wide receiver or tight end in the NFL in the last 20 years. Okay? That's not normal. That's part cheetah, part pterodactyl. That was the sound effect from earlier. That was a real pterodactyl. (laughs) Listen to this. The only rookies in NFL history with 1,000 receiving yards and average 15 yards per reception as 21-year-old players, which is what Kyle Pitts did last year. It's not going to take me long to get through this list. Randy Moss, Mm. Mike Evans, Mm -hmm. Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. It's a good list. That's all. He is special. You're looking at Travis Kelsey getting older. Kyle Pitts is a difference maker at the position that people want to worry about the quarterback situation and draft other players ahead of him. You want to look at the rookie season and say, well, that was pty nice for a tight end. His 110 tar- he had 110 targets, 68 for over 1,000, one touchdown, and he has four other players in history that he has in that company of doing that. The touchdowns are going to come. His year with the touchdowns, it was super weird. Since 1990, 18 different rookies have gone over 1,000 receiving yards. They've averaged six touchdowns. A lot of them have been more. Moss was 17, Evans was 12, Jefferson 7, Jamar Chase was 13. He had one. So you get an average amount of touchdowns last year. Kyle Pitts is going to be in the discussion for the number one overall tight end drafted in redraft leagues, not just in dynasty leagues. And so what I'm saying is, look, we're scared of what we don't understand. Like, Cheetah dactyls. We don't know what to do with them. But I think this year you're going to see something from Kyle Pitts you've never seen before. Maybe begin the long and majestic run of Kyle Pitts being the number one tight end for the next decade. Thank you. That was the queen doing a pterodactyl. (laughs) Cheetah dactyl. We have lost it. This is a great show. Uh, Mike, what do you got for us? All right, so this one, it's, it's a little, it's like a Sour Patch Kids. I mean, like, a little, a little sour at the beginning, but then you'll get to the sweetness. Jahan Dotnit. Dotnin? Dotnin. Dotnin. We got Wait. Dotnin here. Jahan Dotson. Dotson. We've got oh, Dotson we, here. When did we get that? I don't know. I saw it. <laughs> Who put that on the board? Owl. Jahan Dotson finishes with as many top 15 weeks as Terry McLaurin. Yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. That's the response I needed. Look, here's here's what's going on in the draft. I, well, I'll get to Carson Wentz. Hold your horses over there. Also, Here, never yell his name. Yeah. That's, that's, Shame on you. That's Carson's father over there. No profanity. On Sleeper, here's what's going on with the ADP for first round Jahan Dodson. Terry McLaurin being drafted as the wide receiver 14 in the fourth round, which some people are fine with that. Some people think that's a little bit rich. Meanwhile, his teammate, Dotson, wide receiver 57, going at the back of the 13th round in your home drafts. That side, that that gap assumes that it's Terry McLaurin and Dotson has a 0.0% chance of doing anything. But remember the story for what happened with Dodson. Yeah, Terry McLaurin, he got his three-year extension. We know he got the bag, and we're and all— you love him. I love the player. That's 
this hurts me because I love the player. I love the man. That must Terry, mean it's true. Terry McLaurin is an excellent human being, but for, for fantasy football, they drafted Dotson in the first round two months before they extended Terry McLaurin. He was already in the plans. They weren't 100% sure that they were going to be able to extend Terry McLaurin. He gets lost in the shuffle. He was taken 16th overall. That is one spot higher than CeeDee Lamb went in the 2020 NFL Draft. People don't realize how high Jahan Dotson was drafted because before the draft, he wasn't Garrett Wilson, Drake London, Traylon Burks. He wasn't draft Twitter, didn't love Jahan Dotson, but the NFL did. So you need to reevaluate what you think of Jahan Dotson. Last year, Terry McLaurin, for all of his greatness, he was in the top 15 four times. It was a complete and total boom and bust. To extend that out further, he finished in the top 30 those four times. It was a pretty rough year. And now, Scary. As, we, uh, as the crowd eloquently pointed out, Carson Wentz is the quarterback, a PU, because that guy uh, sucks. Look, the training camp reports on Dotson are fantastic. Go look at what's going on in the preseason in snaps. You know who's there stride for stride with Terry McLaurin getting the, the exact same amount of snaps and similar targets? It is Jahan Dotson who is being left into the back of the 13th round, which is ridiculous. So this, this is, I guess, a little bit of an anti-Terry McLaurin ADP. Aww. Very pro Jahan Dotson ADP. And I, I think that the, the gap between them is not what the ADP says about him. Mike, you were early and heavy and hot on Antonio Gibson and Terry McLaurin. Yes. And I think they've been very good. Yeah, they've paid off. And you are pretty much O-U-T on those guys now. I don't know why we need to bring up. I'm, and so, what, 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 come on! How does that make you feel? Talk I got. I got to talk to us. Mike. I got to tell the people something. I I traded Antonio in my dynasty league. When Mike, I when, traded him, Mike, and when, I feel like a coward. Mike, when, when <laughs> and I'm, I'm a loser and a traitor. When did you do this? Last night. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh no. I got Garrett Wilson. It was fine. Uh, <laughs> it is a good deal. It's a good trade. <laughs> I think because you know what sucks, Zach Wilson. <laughs> Oh, I don't know what I'm doing goodness. in my life anymore. I've lost complete control. All right, Mr. Moore, you get to close All out right, the bold I will finish our bold predictions let's, with let's this start, one. Let's, let's, let's end with some real strong positivity. Yeah. Real strong positivity. Say something nice. Well, Travis Kelsey <laughs> yeah. is yeah. not a top three tight end. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not here to bury Kelsey, but I have taken a firm stance on him in just throw in dirt. Best ball. Well, he's not top three. I'm not saying he's going to be bad he or has ruined. The shovel. I do think that he is. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't dig the grave. I'm just putting a little dirt on him. Um, the reality is, I haven't drafted him at all in 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 my best ball leagues. I think he is a bad draft pick for where he's going, which is wild because his ADP basically hasn't changed from last year. He's going at the end of the first or the beginning of the second in every single league, just like he was last year. In fact, his specific ADP is the third highest tight end ADP ever, tied with 2016 Gronk and the 2019 version of Travis Kelsey. He's not two years younger. He's two years older now. Travis Kelsey, if he is not the tight end one based on where you draft him, you are going to be majorly behind the eight ball in your drafts for your league if he doesn't return on that value. He turns 33 in October. Since 2000, there have been zero age 33 tight end finishes in the top three. There's only been one in the top five, and it was Tony Gonzalez first ballot Hall of Famer with Atlanta. He went 83, 667, 867, and 6. If Kelsey does that, you are going to be so mad that you drafted <laughs> Travis Kelsey. Basically, if he doesn't hit 90, 1107, you're going to be disappointed. And since the turn of the century, the best yardage for tight ends age 33 or older is 930, which was Tony Gonzalez, 
and 872 by Antonio Gates. These are two of the best. These aren't like randos, like, oh, well, Travis Kelsey's great. Tony Gonzalez and Antonio Gates are as good as tight ends have ever been. So my point is, right now, Mark Andrews is the man. Kyle Pitts, Andy, is the man. Kittle and Gina's Waller not cost you nothing. They are younger athletes at this point, and Tyreek Hill is gone. Teams could never focus on Travis Kelsey in the past. And it's a new offense. You've got Juju and MVS and Sky Moore. They're going to spread the ball around. If you look at kind of the snap percentages of Kelsey over the last several years, it's dropped every year. I am not saying Travis Kelsey is going to be irrelevant and he's a bust and he's going to be the, you know, you're going to be you're saying that you're dropped. No, I'm saying, I'm saying he's, he's a bust. I'm saying he is a bad pick for fantasy. And oh, that's not, not very bold. He will. He's a bust. <laughs> I mean, what a bum. I mean, I'm, look, I'm just saying. If you're like you're saying he won't return on ADP, and you'll be really you're, mad if if you draft him in the first and he's not great, and yeah. you're saying he won't be, no, that's and fine. B U S T bust. Semantics. I accept that Travis Kelsey will be a bust for fantasy. Oh purposes. my gosh, you heard it here my, first, bust. <laughs> my point is, I'm not saying he's going to be irrelevant, <laughs> okay. but he is not going to return on the value, and I don't think he finishes as a top three tight end. This well, year. sure. That's what you think. Travis Kelsey in the first or Dalton Schultz in the seventh? I will take Cole Komet, please. <laughs> That's a good answer. That's a good answer. All right, are you guys are you guys ready for a mailbag? This is on you, I people. I better hear it. Brooks, are, oh, wait, we're getting the microphone ready. All right, just cheer for Brooks because we're waiting a second. <laughs> Brooks, Whoa. Brooks, Brooks. Brooks. Oh, yeah. Oh, there he is. All right. I want the best mailbag drop we've heard all year. Hit it. Mailbag. That was nice. Very well that done. That was not a bust at all. Next That's no Travis Kelsey. Question. All right. Hopping into the mailbag. Who do we have? Uh, my name is Jared. Jared. Yes, What's sir? your question? All right, so uh, considering the ever-growing popularity of full-point PP R oh, leagues yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and teams switching to RB committees, where do you see 4C for, uh, for uh, running back value changing in dynasty and redraft leagues? More and more we're seeing star wide receivers creeping into the first round when before it was just a run of running backs in your first round. Sure. Yeah, what do you think? Well, I, if you look historically, it used to be there were a lot of good workhorse running backs, and the best of the best workhorse running backs outscore the best of the best wide receivers statistically. Like in a vacuum, the majority of times it's running back. Now there are fewer of them, which ironically makes them far more important, not less important. Uh, and I don't think that that's ever going to go away. I don't think you're going to have a flip where it goes all the way to wide receiver and you've got like one or two running backs just because of positional scarcity. It's truly a matter of the talent that is coming in. If there's a couple year period where there is, you know, I, I think we just are coming out of a few year period where there wasn't a bunch of dominant uh, rookie running backs being drafted, but there are, I think over the next couple of years, there's an influx of some really talented running backs projected to come in the NFL. Yeah, and obviously in that scoring system, you're going to have pass catching running backs or committee backs that catch a lot of passes be um, extremely valuable as well, and maybe they fall to a different place in the draft. We talked a lot about the running back dead zone in the middle of the draft where you're kind of avoiding them, but when you go beyond that, there have been players that make going wide receiver heavy possible. Jared, did you come all the way from Ohio? I did. What? I did. I missed the Detroit show. I didn't get a ticket in time, so instead I came out to 105-degree weather in Arizona. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Welcome in. Welcome in. Well, thank you for coming out, my man. Thank you so much. Jason, do you know how far away that is? That's like where? more than 100 miles. Where, I know. Like, where about in the United States would that be, Jason? Yeah, where do you, Detroit, where you? it's going to be in Michigan. No, not Detroit, Ohio. It's not going to be in Michigan. <laughs> But it's going to be near it. All right. Okay, good enough. Good enough. All right, Mr. Moore. Next question. What do you got? Hey, what's up? I'm Braden. Uh... Wow, this is a hey, very hey, friendly Braden. crowd. Wow. Well, thanks, guys. Don't be afraid of the microphone. Hey, what's one piece of possibly overlooked advice you would give to someone whose first time is managing a dynasty team? Hmm. 
Okay. Well, I I think the number one piece of advice I would give is what I it's my number one piece of advice on Dynasty and it has been for a long time. You get into it and you're so excited about building a long-term franchise that you put so much emphasis in the unknowns of youthful players on the team and then rookie picks that have no guarantee of panning out. And so having balance, realizing that at some point you have to go all in, you have to take some players that might be a little older than you want them to be, um, if you're not an ageist, of course, and uh, put them on the roster. And Adam Thielen can win you a title this year. Those type of players, they're very cheap to acquire in Dynasty Leagues because people want to move towards the younger players. So sometimes if you know you have a competing team, you can target one, two, three of those guys in the middle of the season and make a run because you still want to win a title. It's not about winning one four years from now. It's about winning one at all. Yeah, to, to add on to his point, I think the middle rounds, like once you're past those first four rounds, the four, first four rounds have really good known commodities who are young. Grab those guys. But then once you get in the middle rounds, it's a bunch of question marks with known commodities that aren't young, and that's where you can kind of – uh, you know, put those two things together and you can have a future and a current. And I would say, so a dynasty roster, if you haven't played, generally speaking, you have like 30 spots on your roster. Once your rookie draft is done and you've like, we talk about the value of a third round rookie pick. It's very low because the odds of that player hitting are low. That doesn't mean that when the rookie draft is done, that the waiver wire doesn't have some nuggets for you to go in mind. There are backup running backs who are drafted in the fourth and the fifth round. Go scoop them up because more than likely at some point during the season, a starter is going to miss time and everyone's going to go, oh, Khalil Herbert's on the waiver wire. I got to, oh, nope, the smart team already stashed him. You're like, oh, Eckler's going to miss Justin Jackson. Tyreek Hill was a dynasty he waiver was. wire player. He, he absolutely was, but I'm, I'm saying specifically the running backs, the ones that you don't see the path because they're, they're, they're two on the depth chart. They're even three on the depth chart. The NFL is vicious, man. Guys get hurt all the time. And rookie running backs throughout the season get starts. And they are plug-and-play options when that happens. So don't overlook them. Stash them on the back of your bench. Next question. Was that the oh. queen? Yes. Uh, <laughs> what's your name? Hi, ballers. Chris Molina here from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh, oh wow. Awesome. Hello. Hi. Welcome, so, Chris. I, as many probably know, there's a lot more leagues out there than there were five years ago. I, my, the amount of teams I have has just exploded. Sure. So my question is, how many leagues is too many leagues? And I'm not... Or I'm asking this for a friend, not because I'm getting married in February. Oh, <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. Good way to throw that in there. Uh, so, I mean, I'll jump in because I have an easy answer. Like when, you, when you first get into fantasy football and like the, the, when the bug hits you and people are like, hey, you want to join a league? Yes. You want to join this league? Of course. And before you know it, you're in 10 plus leagues. The, the, the limit where I know I'm in too many leagues in the season, when when Monday Night Football is over and Tuesday rolls around and you have to do waivers and you go, oh, sweet Lord. <laughs> this, this, is, this is homework. You're, you're blocking like, out four hours. Yeah, you're yeah. like, this, this is terrible. I don't, Sorry, I, honey, I can't do anything tonight. It's like, waivers. I don't, even, I don't even want to do this right now. When, when you've hit that point of you log into a platform and you go, I just don't care about the waivers. You don't belong in that league. You're, you've reached your limit. A cheat code, though, for those that want to play in more but want to be actively involved and not, you know, pulling their hair out on Tuesday nights for waiver wired, you know, claim day is find that number of leagues. Let's say it's three. It's about three for me of, of leagues that I'm very serious in. And then add some dynasty leagues because those go so well together. Like di dynasty waivers aren't a huge burden. The the amount of work you do in season is so much less than in your redraft and your keeper leagues that you can have a few more if you want to diversify your portfolio. Also, Kyle the Borgogan has a deal with his wife. Oh. He can't join one without leaving one. So, okay, so the balance remains? He has to keep the balance. That's yeah. good. I, I, I hope he well, started with 50. <laughs> and uh, the last one, because the best part of a league, the, the best part is the draft. So if you feel like, oh, man, I got a draft, 
Best ball, man. Get it. Get in yeah. that over the off season in the summer. You, and, can, do, you can do hundreds. I yeah, can. because then you're done. The draft. Awesome. Once you draft, it's awesome. over. Thank you, sir. How many are you in? How, how many leagues are we in? Like Jason said, he's three is kind of his number. And I'm honestly, in, I'm in nine right now. And it's, yeah. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I maybe six or seven, but it's like when it comes down to it, when the, you have your waiver priority. And you have the energy to put him in for this league and this league, and you kind of start to fizzle out. The, the number for me of important leagues where I can dedicate the time it takes is about three or four. Yeah, and it's hard. I mean, you're in too many, and you have every player on every team, and what are you rooting yeah, for? And, yes, right? And then everything is good and terrible at the same time, yeah. so it's all meaningless. Yeah. That's a good point. Oh, oh my God. God. Final question. <laughs> Hi, Bullers. Uh, hey, what's I'm your name? Eduardo. Eduardo. Hey, I came in from San Francisco to see you. Wow, uh, thank yeah. you for yeah. traveling. Yeah, yeah. you should come to San Francisco the next time. Yeah. Better weather, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm on a 12-team uh, Superflex Dynasty League. Um, I have a very good foundation on my team. I have Mahomes, Hurts, Justin... Justin uh, uh, Jefferson. Justin Jefferson, Jonathan Taylor. Um, yeah, humble brag. Like, yeah. the last Do you actually have a question? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I can't stop winning. I don't know what to do. You do you need a co-manager? My, my question <laughs> yes. is, why am I so good? <laughs> yes. Well, actually, I'm good, so good thanks to you guys. Yeah. So. Well, my question is, how do I keep, uh, how, how do I keep my, team, my, team com my team competing? Uh, and how do, I avoid, how do I avoid going into a re rebuild anytime? Sure. Really soon? I, it's a good question yeah. because at some point in time, and you know, we've had teams in our dynasty league that you just the temptation you want the three P, but then you know that the teams that are rebuilding are way ahead of you on on piling up the picks. Like, how do you do the balance of staying competitive and trying to process a rebuild maybe behind the scenes? The the players you mentioned are perfect assets to be able to pull that off. Jonathan Taylor is the number one pick in fantasy football. He's twenty three years. He's going to be dominant. You're going to trade him in two years. He's going to be 25 years old. He's going to be at the peak of his game. Everyone's going to want him. You're going to get a haul unless something catastrophic, catastrophic happens from <laughs> now to then. You're going to trade him for a young stud rookie and picks. And then that this I've learned from this man. He's done it over and over and over. And the other position he's done it with are these quarterbacks. When you If Jalen Hurts has a blow-up season, he's the number one, the number two uh, you know, quarterback this year. Then look to trade him for a a, a young stud, up and coming quarterback plus a bunch of picks. You have done it to perfection and stayed relevant for too many years. I don't like it. I, on the other hand, do like that. Um, I don't. I traded Mahomes for Herbert. Herbert and lots of other assets, but you have to have the conviction. And this was last year, but you have to have the conviction about those other players. Like Dalvin Cook was coming up when Todd Gurley was still at his peak, and it was like, well, I think Dalvin Cook's going to take the next step. So being aware of what players are coming up, and you have to shoot your shot. You're not going to be right 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. But um, you're right. These assets that seem like they can't go. I mean, Saquon Barkley in a dynasty league, untradeable a couple of years ago, right? And things didn't work out the way that you hoped. Even players like Nick Chubb that you thought had a different ceiling in dynasty doesn't always come to fruition. So... Hopefully you keep dominating and yep. then just pick that right time. It, to it honestly, players. it's it's don't play scared. You which don't be scared to trade a player where you're emotionally attached. You still see the 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 road for them to be dominant for multiple years. But if they're at the top and you can cash out, it's it's like a sneaky rebuild that people don't see coming. And above all, continue listening to the Fantasy <laughs> Footballers <laughs> podcast. Will do. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Give it up for all those questions. All right, we are done with today's episode, but we are coming out in a few minutes. We're going to do an AMA here with the beautiful people of Phoenix, Arizona, which and, and Ohio and San Francisco yeah, all and New over Mexico the place. and everyone who came into town. Thank you so much for coming out to see today's show. We text your questions in. Yeah. We, we've got the uh, the AMA question number there. You can text them in. We're going to answer as many as we can. Thank you once again. Give it up for Brooks and Al. Thank you so much, Phoenix, Arizona. You. You're our Appreciate home. You. We love you. We'll be right back.
thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.